having tomato plants started to look kind of weird on the top they were doing probably really well but then when you come out here and look at your tomato plants you can see that the tops are kind of curling upwards and it's not even in hot sun because sometimes it cools upwards in the hot sun but it's not even because of the hot sun the leaves are just starting to shrink it's starting to look a little bit almost like clubbed branches and it has a thick leathery leaf that's really thin as opposed to the big broad nice leaves that you were once having with your tomato plants if your tomato fits this description then i might know what's going on with them and i might have some information for you so stick around hello everyone thank you all so much for joining in this is Dilla from the training gardener channel and i have some information today which is not the happiest amount of information because things don't always go 100 percent in the garden and it's something that we especially as organic gardeners are going to go through from time to time because we don't use any chemicals in our garden some insects some with not so great intentions do tend to come in every once in a while especially at the start of the rainy season you can see all the weeds and whatnot coming up now because of the rainy season and it's just something that we have to cope with so if you have tomatoes that have been coming up and you find that they are fit in the description that i previously mentioned then you might be a victim of what is known as the curly top virus the curly top virus is a virus that is spread by the leaf hopper which is different from a grasshopper they're related more closely to cicadas and they're very very tiny you probably couldn't even see them if you like go into grass you might see little things kind of jumping away and they look kind of like um, grasshoppers but they're not that's a leaf hopper and what they do is they suck the stem of your tomato plant and every once in a while a leaf hopper will come in that has a virus and that virus it's going to spread to the individual tomato plant how can you identify curly top virus one of the ways you can identify it is that your plants are going to stop growing it's going to be stunted it's going to grow to a certain point and then you're going to be seeing growth it's almost every day every few days you're going to be seeing like a new leaf a new branch something is bigger something is wider it's just doing really well and then all of a sudden it starts to look like the plant is just not going anywhere and that's not normal for a tomato plant when a tomato plant is coming up it grows really really fast think about an adolescent coming up you know like your little cousin or whatever you know you see them like you see them this month you see them six months down the road they, they shoot up you know that's what a tomato plant is supposed to be doing during that first month to two months of growth that's what's normal but then with the curly top virus the growth just kind of stops but the plant doesn't dry out the leaves don't necessarily turn yellow they kind of they sometimes kind of have a little tint of yellow a little tint of like purple right um but for the most part they stay green and that's what again what that's what kind of was is frustrating because it looks like the plant is kind of okay but just not what you're thinking so for a while you don't know what it is and then you can start to see the leaves starting to curl and you know it's normal for leaves to curl when the sun is really hot you know the leaves kind of curl over to protect themselves but in this case it's not a temporary curl it's always curl like that and then the leaves are kind of smaller the, some of the branches become kind of clubbed and that is a telltale sign of curly top virus now i have good news and i have bad news when it comes to curly top virus and let's get into that now now i think we should start with the bad news first just get that out of the way and then we could figure out how to move on with our lives the bad news is that curly top virus cannot be cured there is no cure for curly top virus once your plant has it it has it and the plant is not necessarily going to die that's kind of what is annoying about curly top virus in my opinion is the fact that you know like if the plant is you know sick and has to die and move on then i can move on i get closure but curly top virus the plant just kind of survives and you'll notice that your plants were coming up nice and then all of a sudden maybe at like two feet three feet it just stops and that can be kind of frustrating because you know you're thinking that you know maybe because the plant is alive it's not really dying it could come back but it won't ever come back and um it just kind of be cured so i'm sorry it's a low beat it's one of the less nice things about the garden but i mean it teaches you patience it teaches you to you know persevere despite adversity so now that we have that out of the way let's move on to the good stuff the good thing about curly top virus is that it doesn't have to affect all your tomato plants in my case it did I had six tomato plants over there every single one got curly top virus it's just it's a pandemic i have in the back there but it's very possible to have a tomato plant right here that has curly top virus and one right next to it that doesn't have curly top virus and is in no way affected by the curly top virus because the way the virus works is that the leaf hopper has to come into the tree it needs to start to you know take a little nibble out of your tree and then it transfers through its you know saliva or some way um the virus to the plant but it only transfers that virus to that individual plant the virus does not get transferred through the soil 
actual contact with the leaves in any there's nothing um, that is going to transfer that virus from one tomato tree to the other so you're fine when it comes to that part so what i mean to us is that you can actually pull that tomato out of the ground plant another tomato right where that infected tomato was and there would be no problem at all because there's no pathogen it's not like a bacteria in the soil causing this virus so the only way that another plant is going to get that collator virus is if that leaf hopper or another leaf hopper comes in and then bites that plant so that's a reason to remain hopeful of course it's not the best situation to have in your garden and you don't want that to happen to begin with but if it does happen just know that you don't have to deal with that with all of your plants necessarily it is unfortunate in my case however because all of my tomatoes their six plants got colita virus and it has to do with the fact that you know we have a fair bit of rain these days right it's going into the rainy season in trinidad currently we're now in the end of june and i have had some weeds and stuff coming up that i haven't been taking much care about it's not really because of the weeds but it's more because of the rains you know when the leaf hoppers they spawn and you have those babies coming out and you have a wave of leaf hoppers coming through then they can devastate the area it doesn't have to be that situation and i hope it's not a situation for you but this is what happened in my case here so basically everything has the collator virus now there is a little bit more good news which you can probably take as good news or you know it's just not the best news but your tomato plant could very much be a tomato plant that has been able to produce the tomatoes and then get the collator virus because what happens with the collator virus the plant won't produce any good blooms anymore and you won't really get fruit set if you do get fruit set the plant is sort of like struggling to produce any fruit so it's going to you know be born you know you're going to get a fruit that is fairly deformed um you know with a lot of markings and just not really good but if you don't get collator virus in the early stages of your plant you get it later on then it doesn't destroy the fruit that is currently on the tomato plant so you could in theory have a harvest of tomatoes from your tomato tree before getting collator virus because it's all dependent on the timing when that leaf hopper comes onto your tomato plant and infects the tomato plant with the collator virus before then the plant would have been fine and if there's any fruit that fruit is going to actually stay on to the plant ripen and be just completely fine because it came on before the virus started to affect the plant if the fruit comes on after the virus then that's when you're not going to have a good fruit set and if you do get fruit set it's just not going to be really good it's just not going to be good at all it's going to be something that you're going to want to throw away so let me show you the tomatoes that i have here um they you know it's this is the money maker tomato this is the only one of my tomato plant that was able to have fruit set before the curly top virus attack and i was able to get the some tomatoes from here now this might look like you know you got something but really and truly this is nothing compared to what i was expecting from this plant this plant is known this money maker is known to produce a huge harvest you know talking about five pounds six pounds up to ten pounds of tomato you're supposed to get from one plant but that's in the best of conditions this is not the best of conditions this is we are really downbeat and um yeah just unfortunate but i mean i get this is the th kind of thing that you have to deal with sometimes in the garden and it's not the end of the world you just you know as i said good news you just pull out the plant and you plant back in it and i left some of these on here the birds attacked it because i was waiting to film the video and whatnot um, and also I've been sort of um, when the plant is attacked like this and it's just not doing really well I'm not really motivated to take much good care of the plant so normally I would you know bag up my tomatoes make sure it's nice and safe from the birds and everything like that now I'm just like whatever happens happens because I'm gonna have to pull these out anyway then you have it and you just have to deal with the consequences of that but again you know it's not something to be so depressed about because it doesn't go on from generation to generation i do find that it happens a bit more during the rainy season and specifically in the tomatoes that i plant in ground around where you have a lot of weeds coming up the container tomatoes very very few will ever get called a virus simply because they are so removed from where the weeds and stuff are at least where i have it i normally put my tomatoes where we have concrete so there's a lot less chance that you're going to get leaf hopper coming into that area because there's just no set of leaves for them to come to because if you think of like a leaf hopper if you were a leaf hopper you wouldn't be going towards concrete you're going towards where you have grass and foliage because that's what you eat you eat grass you eat foliage you eat leaves that kind of thing now some tips to prevent collator virus from attacking your tomatoes one of them is to make sure that around your tomatoes it's very clean that means you know mulching to keep the weeds down which is something that I did not do in this case here. So in some ways, I kind of look for my trouble with the Kulita virus. 
Something else you could do is something that I often do with my container garden, which is that I would take my tomatoes and put them in a space that is very much concrete. So you don't have a big set of grass coming up, a big set of debris, because if you think about it, the leaf hopper, it's going to be somewhere where you have a lot of foliage. We have a lot of grass, a lot of leaves, a lot of things to eat. And then that is when you're going to get the um, leaf hopper kind of jumping from one leaf to another leaf. And all of a sudden it's on your tomato plant. If you have your tomato plant on, in containers, away from all of that, and it's in a sort of a concrete clean area, then the chances of the um, leaf hopper getting onto your tomato plant are a lot less. Now there are some preventative measures that you could take when it comes to using products on your tomato plants. One of them is by using diomaceous earth and that is a sort of um, it's a sort of insecticide that is made from crushed up seashells with really really tiny crushed up to a powder and basically that is going to you know kill away and prevent your um, leaf hoppers from getting onto your tomato plants. One of the things about that however is that it does require a fair bit of cost and it's not again going to be 100% effective because you know you can apply it when you have the problem but once your once one leaf hopper gets onto your tomato plant and you know infects it that's pretty much game over so you know the amount of money you invest and your return not being 100 percent you know guaranteed it's for me i just i personally don't do that i just you know i kind of hope for the best and in this case sometimes it doesn't work out sometimes it does and i mean it's a gamble that i take but every once in a while i can be a gambling man of course, you have things like neem oil, but neem oil sprays, they are normally effective after the fact of having a uh, pest on your plants. So you have a pest, you get the neem oil, you get rid of the pest, or maybe if you catch the eggs before they hatch. But um, it's something that you can't really avoid when, from the time that insect gets onto your plant, it already has transmitted the virus and the leaf hopper moves on. Probably not even 10 seconds it will spend on your plant. Just get in, take a chunk out of it, infect, move on it's really un it's really unfortunate to be honest it's a low beat as i said but it's something just to be aware of for me the best thing is just to pull out and replant that's really just it unless you have a case like what i have here with my money maker tomatoes in which case i would wait until the fruit ripens get whatever fruit i have and then pull it out and replant and take precautions or plant things that are not going to be affected so speaking about plants that are not going to be affected the leaf hopper tends to attack plants that are under the nightshade family. So the nightshade family are plants like sweet potato, um, eggplants, peppers, and tomatoes. Those are your main nightshade plants that you're gonna have in your garden. So if you have an area that you know is heavily, you know, there's a lot of weeds in that area and you can't do much about it, or you know, you could weed, you know, you could come in, clean it, put your mouth, but you just know that that area is especially difficult for you to get to, you know, you're busy, whatever the case is, that's completely fine. Plant something that is going to not be as susceptible to the curly top virus especially in the rainy season you know so in my case here something that i would plant is something like squash and zucchini you know i would just put that into the area now because for me it's almost like suicide to plant my um, tomatoes into that same spot because i now see that these are the conditions based on the season that we are in the year so that's one of the things about gardening you always have to be aware of what's going on in the environment the climate before you plant into a certain area. But again, that's all part of the game. And that is it for Curly Top Virus. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something from this video. Have you ever experienced this with your tomato plants? Leave a comment below, let me know if you've ever had it, if you've ever dealt with this issue before. And you know, I hope that this has helped you out to understand what the problem is. You have some ideas of how to prevent it and especially have the encouragement to know that you can just replant and be fine that it's not something that you have to be you know that has to be chronic that you can you know just continue gardening continue trying and just hoping for the best and just hoping that those leaf hoppers you know stay away from your garden for the next time that you have your tomatoes or other nightshade plants coming up now of course if you know someone who would be interested in this kind of information then feel free to share this video with them i help them to grow more healthy organic food in these times where we could all use as much help as we can with eating as healthily and as deliciously and as cheaply as possible remember that you can follow us on tiktok instagram and on facebook to see more content coming out of the training gardeners garden i remember as always this has been dylan from the training gardeners channel reminding you to get up and get green take care